Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mitchell back here on my YouTube channel. It's good to see you guys again. I did make my own bracketology three weeks ago, and it went really well. And I hope you all enjoyed that yet again. I got a really, I got a really good amount of views, so I really appreciate everyone that saw the video tuned in. And I really, I really recommend for those other NCAA fans out there that didn't check it. I would love for you to check it out and just see the hard work I did. It took up to three days just to think of, just to think of how the projections will go and everything. Just for doing it on my own, so it felt very good. So, yeah, from further any further ado, we are. I'm not gonna do it for my own. I'm not gonna do it for my own document. The next one will be in June. But I'm gonna do it from the way too early predictions that ESPN posted. So the article was updated on April 19th, so that was a couple days ago. Today, I finally have time to get. I finally have time to get the early predictions video done. So. The bracket watch will be Kentucky. They are the first overall seed predicted this year after losing to St. Peter's. And they're and I think they're number two. That's coming back. That's really big for them. The Washington State Cougars are the first team out. And then Florida, I think, will get back in the tournament as the last team in. I did have Florida in my way to early predictions video. So I that one is correct. That I had them. So. Yeah, so we, for the bubble teams, first of all, the last four buys will be Wyoming, Providence, who was in the tournament till losing to Kansas last year. Virginia Tech will be back this year. Florida State was, is back with, after, after not making it last year to the NIT tournament. Colorado will be, will be in after losing to Michigan the first round. St. Mary's will be back in. Notre Dame will, the Florida Gators, and then the first four out, which I believe, I, I believe Marquette's going to have enough yet another coach go so i think they'll be right where they're they're the first four out in their nit bound and i think shaka smart might be just struggling with the recruiting i mean he, he might be tired with the marquette so i got i don't see them i don't see marquette doing as well for the start and then wisconsin <laughs> that would be funny to see them out for living in this badger state washington state would be out again iowa state would be would be would We'll go back in the tournament after being an 11 seed and beating Wisconsin the second round in Milwaukee. They would be they would be they would be barely out of the tournament, so they would no longer be welcome back in this case. And then the next four out, which I which is no surprise, is Mississippi State, Clemson, no sister Jean Story of Loyola Chicago, and St. John's. And St. John's made the tournament last season, so that would be a change. And the 16 seeds are Texas Southern making their second in a row after losing to Kansas the first round. SIU Edwardsville is another. Colorado and St. Mary's. Texas A&M Crispy and Mount St. Mary's. Mount St. Mary's made it as well, so they would make it a second year in a row as well. And then Notre Dame would be in their second first floor, first four in, in, this la in these last two years against Florida, who would be part of the last four in. So, Kentucky, the number one overall seed against SISU, Edwardsville, and Texas Southern. I cannot I cannot go against Kentucky this time, especially that they are the one seed and they have a lot returning under head coach John Cal Perry. So, we'll, we'll have Kentucky win that one. Next, we have Iowa against Colorado State. They both lost early in the first round. Iowa lost to Richmond, and then Colorado State also lost to Michigan in the first round. Both dramatic upsets in the tournament and turned a lot around, so... Richmond only won that game, granted, but just that they that they beat a really good Iowa team, and they had a, Iowa have Bohannon return, and he'll go pro this year. I think Colorado State has more depth, and they have a little bit more than Iowa, so I will take Colorado State to play Kentucky, and I have to take Kentucky to make the Sweet 16 this time. I can't have I can't have a night. I don't think this early to have a ninth seed beat them. I don't think they have enough to beat them at this moment. Next, TCU, who barely lost to Arizona the second round, which would have been an ultimate upset for the brackets. They will be back in it against Toledo. I got to go with TCU. And then Purdue, which a school I never heard of, is against Towson. I can't see Towson beating Purdue, so then Purdue will win. And then I'm going to have a slight upset of TCU in the Sweet 16 after, after, missing out to, after missing out last year to Arizona, and that could have been a... Big 12 National Championship, but they just kept going to the National Championship. They were the toughest ninth seed, in my opinion. They were, they were like the top ninth seed that could have really made a run if they did. So I think they're going to advance to the Sweet 16 against Kentucky. And then to predict the predict the South Regional Elite Eight, I think Kentucky will make the Elite Eight. 
And now in Des Moines, we have that region. So we have can't we have Kansas and Colgate. We got to go with Kansas after Colgate almost beating Wisconsin. I think Kansas has enough to return, even though Christian Bond and, and Abachi are more than likely going to go pro. They're going to have enough returning where they can make a couple rounds until tough competition. And then Xavier, Wyoming, I will take Xavier. And then I got to take Kansas to make their second Sweet 16 in a row. And then Duke under head coach Mike Joseski, who's retired. He is, they are not under him anymore. I was just being sarcastic, but they are playing Liberty and they're looking for their second Final Four appearance in a row under their new head coach. And I think they will beat Liberty. And then Texas A&M, I believe, will beat Colorado and St. Mary's. So, yep, I think, that'll, I think that's definitely going to happen. So, so I, within that winter, I don't think St. Mary's will pull out their second miraculous upset in a row. So, Texas A&M will move on against Duke, and I can't see Texas A&M beating Duke, so it will be a it will be a rematch, near a rematch of the national championship game that they met up. It would be a big matchup of the Sweet 16, Duke and Kansas. I can't see Duke. I can't see Duke beating Kansas quite, and they they're going to have a big transitional year. A three seed would be very high for them going into this year. So then it will be a, and then it will be Kentucky and Kansas, which is a, which was a high predict, highly predicted national championship game in 2022. And then I think Kentucky will make the final four. So the number one overall seed would make it very very far in this in this projection. Next we have the second overall seed UCLA playing Norfolk State. I gotta take UCLA. San Diego State against St. Louis. I gotta go with San Diego State. Alabama and Missouri State. I gotta go with Alabama. New Mexico State, I think, will beat Creighton. Creighton's very prone to get upset, and they, they lost a very big lead in the, la in the last tournament, and they lost it to TCU. So I got I to gotta take Creighton to lose. So I think New Mexico State's finally going to pull out a big upset. So then Alabama against New Mexico State, I got to go with Alabama to make the Sweet 16. Michigan, if they get Hunter Dickinson back as a three seed against Yale, I'll, I'll take Michigan to beat Yale. And then I'll take Virginia Tech also to also to win another 11 C game against Texas. And that's a very good game, an ACC Big 12 game really early. So I'll take Virginia Tech to play Michigan. And then Michigan will make the Sweet 16 again for their third year in a, for their third year in a row. Third out of the last five seasons. USC and Providence, I got to take USC. Gonzaga and Oakland, I will take Gonzaga. And then you and then and then the matchup of USC and Gonzaga. I think Gonzaga is going to have a bit more potential where they can make a run to at least later rounds. So I think Michigan will play Gonzaga, and then Michigan will continue their run after losing the head coach, former head coach Jay Wright in Villanova. And Michigan will make the Elite Eight, their second one in three seasons. So Michigan and UCLA will meet up for the Elite Eight. And I'm going to take my Michigan Wolverines to be the regional champions of the West. And that will be a very big Elite Eight for them to play in Vegas. Their fans travel very well. And for them to play in Vegas, and I think they're going to have a lot, a lot of depth. And if he comes back, I think they will make their second national semifinal appearance in the in these last third in, in these last six seasons. And then their third in the last in the last near decade. So they would make it there. And then, and then for the spot in the national championship, their run's going to end against Kentucky. I don't see it going further than that. It would be the rematch of 2013. So they haven't played each other since the 2013 through 14 tournament with the Aaron Harrison shot. So Kentucky will move on to the national championship game. Houston under head coach Kelvin, Kevin Sampson, they, they just missed the final four pick by not by much. I had them going to the final four against Villanova. I had Villanova and Houston a lot in my pool, so I felt very smart there. Oklahoma State, Oregon. I gotta take. I gotta take Oregon to beat Oklahoma State. They're gonna have a tab more, I think, for missing the tournament last year. Houston will move on to the Sweet 16 then. Auburn against Chattanooga. I gotta take Chattanooga for how bad Illinois played and Ch and Chattanooga beating beating them. Unreal. And then they they will rematch with Illinois, and I think I think Chattanooga will make the Sweet 16. And they improve, and they improved their seed after being a three, after being a 13 seed last year. They improved it by one, so I think they're going to be a Cinderella and make the Sweet 16. And then Houston will beat Chattanooga, and their run will end after the after the Sweet 16. So there won't quite be a Elite Eight champion. There won't quite be an Elite Eight representative. They won't be missing by a lot. I'll take Notre Dame and Florida. They're both a dangerous 11th seed to beat a 6th seed Indiana. So I will take I will take Notre Dame and Florida to play Arizona. 
And I have another double digit seed in the Sweet 16. So a double digit seed will be in the will make the Sweet 16 against against Chattanooga. So I gotta take then the winner of that game to make the advance to the Elite Eight. Arkansas and Louisiana. I will take Arkansas. Texas Tech and UConn, I will, this is the one time I'll take a very good 10th seed, which is UConn. They're a good 10th seed to pull it out in Florida. Arizona and Montana State, I will, I went through that one. So in the Sweet 16, I would see, in the Sweet 16, we will see Notre Dame and Florida against Arkansas. Arkansas will make the Elite Eight yet again, and it will be their second Elite Eight in these last three seasons. So Arkansas will be will meet Houston, and I think Houston's gonna Houston's run's gonna end for a second year in a row in the Elite Eight. So they'll miss the Final Four by a slight bit, and Arkansas will make the Final Four. And then I think and and I think for Baylor and Longwood, I gotta take Baylor, Virginia and Memphis. I will take Memphis. I will take Memphis to pull it out again. I got that one right in my in my brackets. That was a good one to get right. A slight upset. They are back as a ninth seed. I will take them to beat, have a slight upset against Virginia. I trust them a little bit more. Michigan State and UAB, I got to take Michigan State. Four, Tennessee against UC Irvine. Tennessee is a four, is a four seed this year, and they, they are down a seed after beat, after losing to Michigan eventually. They got to at least move on for a game. And then I have the Spartans against Baylor for the Sweet 16. Baylor is going to have a little bit more than Michigan State, so Baylor will make the Elite Eight as a one seed. Ohio State and Oklahoma, I will take Ohio State. North Carolina and Vermont, I will take North Carolina. Dayton and Florida State, I will take Dayton. Villanova and Iona, I gotta go with I gotta go with Rick Patino's team. Villanova will be done and Jay Wright just retired. I think they're I think this is gonna be another very, very big upset that no one would get right. So it would be Dayton and Iona for the second for the third round to make this advance to the Sweet 16. I will take Dayton. So then there will be a matchup of of Dayton and North Carolina. We'll take North Carolina to move on to the Elite Eight. And then uh and then Baylor and North Carolina. I think North Carolina will make their second that final four in a row, and their run will continue after the runner ups in the national championship game, and they will make the final four against Arkansas. Arkansas is a little bit better than North Carolina this year. I see a lot more I saw I see a lot of growth in Arkansas more than North Carolina, so I'll take North Carolina to Advance to another national championship game, and then and then the, in the final four we have UCL, we have Michigan and Kentucky. So yeah, that would be that would be the final game. Arkansas and Kentucky. I will go with the number one overall seed for for this early projection. Projection Kentucky to fully break the hump after losing the St. Peters and winning the entire thing. So I hope you all enjoyed that video and and just keep looking out for more of these and then some NFL draft future coverage and we'll see you on my next video. So Kentucky will be breaking the hump from this video. So people may, might pull this video up as as maybe a glimpse if they do it again, just just as and as their way too early projection in case they pull it out. Hope everyone enjoyed. As I said, till next time. Bye.